My name is Chris Wade. I'm the CTO with Itential. Thanks for everybody coming today. Um, so we're going to jump right in. So um, as we think about networking and as we're on the floor at Cisco Live, uh, it's really about networks of networks. We have data center networks, SD-WAN networks as you walk the floor. Um, there's all s sorts of different paradigms um, that continue to exist. Um, and we also have to think about our, our IT and OSS systems. So everybody has IP, IPAM, CMDB systems. Automation is really starting to evolve into an orchestration concept where how do we take all of these different aspects and tie them together? So we have pockets of automation and we're talking about how do we tie all these different aspects together? So when we think about automation, so we're gonna grab all this stuff and uh, for our demo today, we're really gonna focus on a couple concepts. So Itential is known for a, a variety of things, layer um, and also our automation and design studio. So we're gonna really, really focus on that today. And when we're talking with folks, they really don't start from scratch anymore. So when we started talking about automation five, six years ago, we had to actually explain the value of automation. This is why you should automate. Talk about quality of configuring the network, talk about compliance with the network, talking about integrating with sources of truth. And we've really evolved to where automation is really how we operate networks, right? So as people come to the booth and as we start talking to people, it's really about how do I operate my network leveraging automation, not how do I operate my network and then automate certain parts of it. So we're really seeing this integration. So we're gonna spend today for our portion really in our design canvas. We're not gonna try to click around too much within the product. Lots of features we're not gonna go through, but we have a very basic demonstration where we're gonna be integrating with Netbox, integrating with InfoBlock, so from that, that whiteboard presentation, really pulling data from our IT system, really understanding the sources of truth. Um, then we're gonna integrate with an existing script, we're gonna integrate with a playbook, and we're gonna integrate with Viptela. So really talking about how do I onboard scripts from DevNet, how do I take an existing playbook, how do I take an existing API, and how do I tie these things together as an end-to-end -end automation? When we talk to our customers, there's pockets of automation. People have thought about how do I automate my job? How do I make my job easier? How do I do my job better? The question is how do we tie all this stuff together? So if we take our first one with Netbox, you'll see on the right-hand side here real quick, um, there's a whole set of automations. We'll get back there. Yep. But if I go to the Netbox API, the thing we're really excited about these days is that the applications and platforms and people that present to you folks have awesome APIs that didn't exist five years ago. So if we pop over and look at the Netbox API, you can see all the different um, concepts in here. The interesting thing is when we start looking at different APIs, nobody builds their APIs the same. We're super excited because we have open API spec. We're super excited because people are using JSON schema, but the way Netbox models it, the way Infobox models it, the way ServiceNow talks about it, the way Viptela talks about it, we have no agreement on data models. We have no agreement on data structure. So the question is, how do I take all these disparate things and, and stitch them together? So we basically take that API and with no code, we can generate this set of APIs because Netbox has done a very good job of describing their APIs in JSON schema format. Itential can take that in and auto-generate that adapter without, without any code. Um, What's even more interesting than that is as Netbox evolves and they add new APIs, we can auto-generate it again. Everybody knows that if we just wanted to do something one time, I could write a Python script. It's really, it's really not that big a deal. The question is, as I platform it and as I change it over time, how can I evolve that and how can I maintain it without forking and forking and forking? How can I make it extremely reusable? So if we take the next example and we look at InfoBlox, they publish the REST API. You can see this is not in the same Swagger format, but this is what we do every day, right? If, if, if you're at your jobs and you're gonna automate stuff, you go look at the API, you scrape through it. So what we've done is we've also auto-generated uh, an API from InfoBlocks. And again, you have all the API calls. So Itential is not opinionated. We don't say you get these three calls, you get these five calls. You don't have to call us and tell us to write these APIs for you. You auto-generate all these calls. So then you can drag and drop it uh, right on the canvas. So if I take the next one, we'll come back to the JSTs in a minute. Yep. But if I take this script, I don't see any documentation for that, right? So if I, if I understand where that script came from, I just go to DevNet. So since we're at Cisco Live, we're gonna search for a Python script. And what do you guys think is the most used Python script on DevNet? Um, Mr. Hake Preston's Python code samples here. Yeah. So um, you guys have probably all dug in this to before. So I have this script downloaded many, many times, used for a variety of things. But once we bring it in, into Itential, so if we look at the script and you, you bring it back into the, the design canvas, it's now just like everything else. So I can take 
NetBox's APIs, I can take InfoBlox's APIs, and I can take Hague's script, and now I can all stitch these together. So before we jump into the playbook, we can imagine that the data problem that I talked about, so we can pull in these APIs, but there, is there any agreement between how Hank wants his IP address and how InfoBlox is going to give it to me? The answer, the answer is no, right? So within this automation canvas, we think over the last couple of years, we've really solved the API ingestion problem. That's something we've worked very, very hard on. So how do I take these APIs and how do I make them available on potential? The next thing is how do I integrate data? And how do I, so most of the time, whatever tool you're in, you're busting out into some, some code sample. So if we go and look at the actual um, JST, we call them JSTs because the data is coming back as JSON and our platform speaks JSON schema. So if I take JSON schema on the left, you might want to zoom in a little bit. This is the JSON schema that came out of NetBox. If he scrolls down, you'll see the JSON schema that came out of InfoBlox. And we'll see that what we need is we need an IP address and a destination IP address and an interface name. So instead of busting out and having to write code for this, we can now take two different APIs with two different payloads and stitch them together through a drag and drop canvas. Okay. A question about that. Please. Two at the same no, no, two, two at the same I'm time. Commenting, that's awesome. You go ahead. Gotcha. So, question about that. So, so why would I be pulling information from those specific two sources, right? Why would I get an IP address from Infobox and not also Netbox? So, yeah. So, from an intentional standpoint, we're extremely unopinionated for that. Unopinionated. Right? Unopinionated. So, if you see like how many SD WAN platforms are out there, how many DDI platforms, every day different cloud cloud services. So, from our perspective, we're an automation platform. We are less interested necessarily in the technology choice that underpins it, we're highly interested in how do we automate those APIs seamlessly. Okay. So as people start to automate, I mean, first step's really writing some scripts. Second step is really using some DevOps tools. Then we start getting into the, the API world, right? So the question is, how do we start, I mean, if you go check out DevNet, right? That's all we're talking about. So how do I generate that API and how do I ingest it in the platform? And then how do I take a Python script and an Ansible script and put it on par with NetBox and, and InfoBlox's APIs? So we think that that's, that's, that's really, really important because you're gonna have pockets of automation in your organizations. We're not saying stop doing this, stop doing that. The question is how do we leverage it and, and take benefit from the automation that's already happened? Because in every organization, there's some level of automation happening somewhere in those different domains. So we could talk about this for a long time, but within JSTs, you can do all sorts of data transformations. You saw all the methods on the right-hand side. So if you need to manipulate the data, if you need to do math on it, if you need to do whatever you can do. So maybe we get back into Automation Studio. So if I've got my IP addresses, I've transformed my data. If I look in the script, so Within these tasks, each of these blocks are basically you know, a piece of logic. It's either going to execute an API or it's going to do some, some automation logic. As an input to the script, right? and most scripts don't have any sort of schema on top of them, um, I can actually have access to everything that's run before. So I, can take the so I can take the output of my JST, if we can show that. Yep. And you'll see you have access to everything that's been running in this, in this workflow previously. And this is auto-generated based upon the state model that you've built by dragging. So as you get farther down in the model, you have access to more things that have already run. If you're at the beginning, you only have the things that have, that have been run before that, if that makes sense. So we're trying to make this very consumable and usable and trying to uh, give you the power of what you would build in software, but trying to make it very, very accessible and not allow you to do things that <laughs> would not be possible. So we're going to pass, pass these variables in. We'll run this in a minute. And the next thing is we're going to look um, at a playbook. So if we go out to uh, Galaxy yep. this one. and we search for, what do we NXL. search for, Karin? This is, this is just an NXOS modifying an ACL yep. uh, on a data center. Awesome. So we went and found a popular playbook for, for NXOS, or it's a role yep. in this case. No, it's a playbook. Oh, it's a playbook. And we're bringing that in, and we're also passing in variables as a result of that. And then ultimately, we're doing this, uh, this Viptela API, yep. just for the sake of time. So if we go look at the Viptela APIs, it looks, because it's an open API spec, it looks like a lot like the NetBox thing. So the idea is we're taking a variety of different 
things, you know, and by the way, Viptela also automates things, right, within the controller. So we're taking automation with the controller, automation from with an Ansible, automation from a script, automation from Netbox, and tying all these, all these things together. So the net result is the use case we're driving here is really um, an application connectivity service. So when we think about why we want to automate things, we think the ultimate user of this is a self-serve application owner for a lot of things. We have a lot of maintenance activities. We have a lot of network engineering activities. But ultimately, why do we do automation? We want to expose this in a self-service capacity, right? So when we build these workflows and these automations and you hit the save button, it actually creates an API route with an itential that's now accessible to anybody that has access and permissions through our back. So you don't have to go through API gateways. You don't have to build all sorts of consternations around that. You basically save this, and, and it's now available kind of as, as, as an API. And ultimately, we want to expose this out um, so that anybody can consume it. If we think about how do people consume these things these days, they consume them through ServiceNow. They consume, they, they consume them through other, through other API systems. In this case, we wanted to do a more of an infrastructure as code type of demo and actually run a pipeline from Terraform on top of it so we can see about how, how we can start tying this into kind of that future state. So, Karn, if you want to kind of walk through what you're doing here. Sure, that sounds good. So what we're going to do is we have a repository set up, right? Everyone is into Git, whether you use GitLab, GitHub, doesn't matter. So with respect to what's actually happening within the demonstration is someone is instantiating infrastructure um, in the cloud and they're gonna deploy their web server or whatever applications they have. The requirement there is the application requires connectivity back into the campus because that's where the data is. Uh, but it has to flow through all the domains that we talked about, right? It has to flow through that SD-WAN circuit. Then you have to make changes into the data center from a firewall perspective. And then you have to modify the interfaces so there is connectivity built. Uh, so to the point here, what we're gonna do is instead of someone having to um, proactively write that within the pipeline, one of the steps within the pipeline will be to call Attentials API to actually kick that automation orchestration off, right? So that's exactly what we're going to do. So as a coder, I come in or, you know, infrastructure as code, uh, whether someone is filling out a form and that actually modifies one of the files in here, um, that's exactly what we're going to do here. So I'll go into the app infra. Um, and in this case, I'm actually updating the um, infrastructure as well as the application deployment within the Atlanta region, right? So I'm, all I'm gonna do is just use a web IDE here and modify the droplet count, right? I'll go from three to two because that's what I want for my HA. As soon as this change goes through, so when I click on create commit, obviously there are pipeline principles, right? You are most likely gonna push this through your MR. Someone is gonna review it, it gets deployed in your testing environment, and then it goes into master. For the sake of this uh, demonstration, I'll quickly just check this thing directly into master. So as soon as I commit, it actually kicks off a pipeline and we'll go quickly take a look at what that pipeline looks like. And uh, it's actually gonna kick off that automation that we were showing you earlier. So this is what that pipeline looks like here. Um, and you'll notice it's currently on the first stage, which is it's creating infrastructure. And as Chris mentioned, right, um, a lot of SREs, they wanna use their own tools. So they love Terraform. That's great. So they're using Terraform to instantiate the infrastructure and potentially deploy their application. But as soon as it's pertaining to the network, which is the last step here, that is the connectivity service request we have exposed through a webhook slash API. So that software developer basically is just calling our API to kick it off. So as of right now, it has successfully kicked off an automation with an itential that you guys were looking at early on. And at the end of it, once it kind of goes through an automated process, provisioning all the pieces, it's going to drop a notification uh, within MS Teams that we're going to take a look at shortly. So, you know, you guys have probably talked about this a lot, but the, the reason we think this is, is super, super important in this is the sense that you saw within the automation studio environment with an itential, it's a very low code environment, right? So it allows people to participate in automation. When we start showing stuff like this, there's a certain population of people that start saying like, I'm, I'm a little concerned about how we're, how we're going to do our networking task within this, right? So within the networking domain, providing that integration environment so we can take all this data from all these APIs and tie them together, but expose it so it can participate in kind of a high code environment um, with infrastructure as code being the ultimate goal. And why do we even do infrastructure as code? As the network continues to get more and more complex, the level of testing and verification that is required continues to increase, right? So with an itential, we didn't show it today, but we can do pre-checks and post-checks. Um, a barrier to automation is always the level of rigor and testing that the, the, the customer is comfortable with so that it can start to automate the network, which is why we're going to be showing some of the validation 
um, stuff later. But within pipelines, instead of, instead of writing all those pre-checks, I can have one test, then I can have 10 tests, then I can have a thousand tests. And the, the level of rigor and comfort that goes along with automation continues to increase. So we continue to think that that's, that's really the North Star um, for automation. So yeah. after that's run, I guess you're going to yep. see it in Teams. Yeah, it's a, that's the last piece, right? It's important thing is notification. Uh, how do you notify the user, whether it's through MS Teams, Slack, uh, going back to the pipeline and updating and moving that to the next step? Um, that's something that Attential does. So in this case, we just dropped a notification saying this is exactly the loop back that we're going to uh, that we pull from Netbox and then uh, the IP address from Infoblox. And basically, these just updates as we kind of go through the, the motion of updating and modifying the network. And, and since it was a question on JSTs earlier, you can see kind of the structure of this. If we go back into the design canvas. The JSC? Yeah, yeah. If, yep. if you look at the JST that, yep. uh, that built the, uh, the MS Teams message. Oh, I see. Yep, we got the interface name, and that's a template literal. So MS Teams requires the data in certain format for it to actually push that out. So we basically took that as a payload, and we were basically filling the variables that we pulled from various different sources. So with an intentional, no, no coding, no backend logic, exposing it as an API into your infrastructure's code, but consuming all those APIs, consuming all that data, and allowing you to manipulate it as you see fit for the use case. Was there a question? Question. How do you recognize all these different models? How do we recognize the, the, the models? models? The attributes inside the models. So that's, that's, so that's the awesome thing within. So if we go back to uh, design, the oh, design. design canvas, and pick on like one of the, one of the objects. This that box is fine. Yep. So within the APIs that are described, within the API, there's a JSON schema payload within each of those APIs. Mm -hmm. And Itential natively thinks of data structures in JSON schema format. So we're taking basically, we're ingesting that JSON schema. So when when you fill in the task variables, yeah. it's actually populating those and making sure that it's an integer or an array of strings. Or Can you augment that? Because not all the documentation and models are properly. It's Documentation is not correct on APIs. Uh, Are you serious? No, just um, yeah. yeah. So, so, so we can ingest it natively. We also have an adapter builder where you can take a Postman collection. You can take a whole variety because not every provi everybody's providing open API specs. So you can hand roll it if you want. Um, more than likely, people give us Postman collections, and then you can augment it as you see fit. But with that, you get data validation. You don't allow people to put strings where numbers should be. You can't put VLAN ports where, where interface descriptions are supposed to be. So you prevent all that bad data from ever getting started within the platform so your automations are clean from the beginning.